I'm looking at this. 3% interest on both checking and savings. Debit card requires no minimum balance, no monthly fees or deposit requirements, no foreign transactions or overdraft fees. I mean, this sounds too good to be true. How are you pulling this off? What's the catch here? So we're very excited to be announcing Robinhood Checking and Savings today. It's a product we've been working on for over two years. And we're excited to pay 3% interest, like you said, on both checking and savings. Compare that to the national average of 0.09% offered by most savings accounts. This is a huge difference for consumers. And for the median American house that's got about $8,000 in the bank, this adds up to a staggering $240 a year, which is going to be amazing for customers. Plus, we pay it out every single day. So that's, that's like getting a dollar every day in your, in your account every Monday through Friday of the week, every week of the year. So A, how are you going to make money on this? And B, how sustainable is it, especially when you look at rates 10 year below 3% right now? Absolutely. So our goal is to be profitable with this business. And we plan on making money in two ways from it. First one is we collect interchange revenue because we have debit cards, as you mentioned, that we're offering through partnership with MasterCard. And also we invest uh, customer cash into treasuries and government grade assets. And we believe that over time we'll be able to generate yield in excess of what we pay to customers. So we're very excited about this and we do intend for this to be a profitable business for us long term. Hey, Beijing, as you grow and add services though, there are costs. I mean, just yesterday, you guys had an outage related to your options trading. Right now, I'm looking at uh, your status notification saying you've been working overnight to restore access to accounts. Nearly all have been restored. You got some customers upset about that. As you make these promises on services that you're able to deliver, if something goes wrong and there's no human being for the customer to talk to, you guys, I believe, have around 300 employees. How does your model account for that? Yeah, so we did have an outage yesterday. We've been working around the clock to address it. You know, it affected a small percentage of our customers. We're, we're excited to have it back in life for everyone. And as Robinhood has been from the very beginning, we're committed to building an engineering first company. Go on, we can still hear you. What? Apparently we've got a problem uh, with the audio. Uh, Perhaps he was hearing something that wasn't us. Beju bought of Robinhood. It's a, it's a challenge that they've got. If they're going to pay out not only 3%, but do it every day, that's a real cost on the books. And once again, uh, while the promise of this is big, and we've seen the likes of JP Morgan uh, looking to follow suit with no fee trading, their costs. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because I know that they've made an idea. Maybe we can get him back on and ask him about it. But, you know, they've they've hired a CFO last month. I think there's expectations that eventually they would go public. Comparisons to this idea of Amazon going for growth over profitability right now. When you're talking about 3% on checking and savings, it sounds going to sound very attractive to many people, I'd imagine, beyond millennials. Uh, that being said, let's ask Beiju about that. I, I think the technical difficulties have been resolved. Uh, Beiju, um, in terms of plans for Robinhood in the future, you brought on a CFO, I believe, last month. You looking to go mm -hmm. public anytime soon? Yeah, it's uh, something that's in the plans long term. We have no firm timeline on it just yet, but we're excited to continue to grow the business. Very excited to have, like you mentioned, Jason Warnick joining as CFO. Uh, yeah, business is doing very well. Finally, Beijo, I wonder, um, is, is participation in the 3% checking uh, you think it's related to any weakness we see in equity prices or I mean, is it sort of like the, the corollary we see with CDs when stocks are weak, people go to, to steady yield? So there, there's no correlation with that. It's something that we have seen in the markets. As you mentioned, the markets have been pretty volatile over the last few months. But this is something we've been working for, on for a long time and we're, we're more interested broadly in expanding our services so that we have more things customers can do with Robinhood. And now we're very excited to have checking, savings, and investing on our product. And Beju, I do want to give you a chance to go back and finish your answer. I had asked you about the glitches on the platform. You had said that uh, it affected a small number of customers. But as you add services, what's your commitment to making sure the customers are made whole and kept satisfied when things do go wrong? Absolutely. I mean, we are 100% committed to making sure that our services are up and they're reliable and that customers have a great experience. 
Like, uh, like you mentioned right before we got unexpectedly disconnected, we did have an outage yesterday. The team has been working around the clock to address it. You know, I personally have been involved as well. And you know, it affected a small percentage of our customers and we're working very hard to make sure that our systems are up and reliable for everyone.